If you are doing interviews and this person comes on late, you already kind of got an idea of who you're dealing with. Or if you get, or you're doing an interview and you're doing a Zoom interview and they are in the car driving when they get on the interview, that kind of shows you how serious they take this. Hey, what's up my friends, Marco Russell here, the CEO and co-founder of Strategic Scale Institute. And over the past 10 plus years, we've been helping service-based businesses grow and scale six, seven, and eight figure empires. And in this particular video, I wanna share with you seven hiring mistakes to avoid. We've hired tons of individuals, helped individuals hire tons of individuals, and there's some common mistakes. This video may be a multi-part series, but I wanted to give you seven for this particular video. And um, I got them in my thing, in my phone here, um, because I can literally go on and on and on, but I wanna hit right into it. So number one, I think the first hiring mistake is hiring fans. So if you are a, if you have like a personality brand, um, your coach, your consultant, your speaker, um, you have, and you're some type of influence or something, and you're hiring fans. Sometimes you make a mistake in hiring people who just want to be around you or just be in the ecosystem, but they're not really fit for the role, and they'll lie and do what they have to do to get in the role because they want to be, um, they want to be in the vicinity of you. So I think that's a huge, huge mistake. Now sometimes that can work out, um, but um, uh, many times. It doesn't work out from 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 experience, right? So that's number one. Um, number two is not having a hiring funnel, right? Um, because you want to have a consistent hiring funnel in place, so that way your team members know that um, you have a pipeline of individuals coming in, and you can always hire at will if need be. Because you want your business to be process dependent not people dependent okay now so you want so what does your hiring funnel look like so i actually did an episode with a client on our strategic scale show you probably see it here on our youtube channel where we i walked him through how to build a hiring funnel for his accounting firm right um, so you want to have that just like you have a marketing funnel where you're getting new leads you get new applicants coming in you want to have a hiring funnel as well where you're getting new leads and you're getting new applicants for roles and also building a wait list for role roles so just in case somebody quits or you have to fire somebody or whatever the case may be you have a pipeline where you can actually bring um, new talent in. So that's number two. I would say number three, and again, I'm pulling this on because I want to just go through it step by step because I'll be all over the place. Number three is hiring only one, specifically if it's a sales role. So if you're hiring a salesperson or I, uh, or SDR who's going to be doing outbound and booking calls and so forth, specifically for a sales role again, you, now you can consider this in other roles as well. However, um, I highly recommend if you're hiring for a sales role, you bring on two or three, ideally three. If you're bringing on some salespeople, bring on about three people um, because typically one will just kind of drift away. Um, two, it'll be a clear probably fit that they're not a fit and then one will end up sticking. But if you only bring on one, that puts you, you don't hedge against all these other things going to happen. So not hiring enough candidates um, at a time is a big thing. So that's number three. Um, number four, um, the biggest thing is not understanding the clues, right? So for example, if you are doing interviews and this person comes on late, right? You already kind of got an idea of who you're dealing with. Or if you get, or you're doing an interview and you're doing a Zoom interview, right? Let's just use, let's say you're doing Zoom and they are in the car driving when they get on the interview. That kind of shows you how serious they take this or they're in the gym or those type of things. You want to look at the clues and see how people are performing because people can interview well, but you want to look at the obvious signs if this person is an ideal, uh, ideal candidate. Also, another one, speaking of sales, is hiring like a salesperson. A lot of times I've seen individuals, and I've made this mistake as well, is actually doing turning this into like a consultative sales call where like you're kind of selling this person on the role versus them selling you on why you should um give them the particular role right and sometimes you might have to bring somebody else actually in to do the interviews who's gonna who who can actually move from that particular perspective perspective and not be trying to sell them into the role so hiring and interviewing um like a salesperson also being sold on the resume all right, I know for me personally, I'm, I'm, this is this is just my thoughts. I don't, I, I'll skim a resume, but people can make resumes up. You can go on Chat GPT and make a resume or any of these other softwares. But I just want to have a conversation with the person, and I want to um, know all the other stuff. A big question I ask is like, I see that you work with some pretty reputable companies. Um, why why aren't you still there? Like how are those things worked out? Because they'll list out all the companies they worked with, what they did there, but typically they won't put why they aren't there anymore. So I think not asking that question, why aren't you there anymore, uh, 
is a high risk bank that we can add. So we'll just make that one the bonus, right? Um, also, just asking generic co asking generic questions, right? Those canned questions. Um, um, well, how, well, how was your career? Tell me about yourself. You know, just generic stuff like that. You want to ask stuff that's going to kind of shake them up a little bit, right? Because uh, again, you want them to sell you on why you should actually give them the position um, with your company. So those are seven hiring mistakes to avoid. Um, so when you're going into hiring and bringing on new people for your team, um, you want to keep these specific things um, in mind. Now, if you're in a business, you have a service-based business and you're looking to scale things up, you want to build a world-class team. You want to remove yourself from the day-to-day -day client delivery. You want to automate your marketing and sales systems and so forth. Look in the description section of this video. we got some cool resources for you that you can actually go dive into. And, um, and that's it. Subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. But make sure you grab those resources um, in the description section of this video. It's going to help you get on track to building a business that's more predictable, more scalable, more profitable, uh, more scalable, more enjoyable, and potentially more sellable. So go ahead and grab those um, resources now. And I'll see you in the next video.